Today is uh, Septuagesima Sunday. They murmured. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. A few years ago, I was passing through Paris on my way to a little pastoral visit in France, and the French uh, were hosting a conference of former colonialists from the French-speaking African world, and uh, there was there were discussions, and something came up. Uh, the Africans dared to tell the French they didn't like the way they were doing something, one of their policies in Africa. And uh, the president uh, of the republic, Jacques Chirac, took it the wrong way, and he said something which was sort of magnificently pompous that you could only say in French. He, he said to them, he said, Messieurs, vous avez manqué l'occasion de l'auteur, which means literally, uh, gentlemen, you've missed an opportunity to be quiet. Uh, I've often thought about that. You've missed an opportunity to be quiet. I think sometimes, not only the children, but all of us, miss an opportunity to be quiet. I don't think that this phrase is just a Gallic hubris or pride. I think it contains uh, quite a bit of what we call the science of the saints and the imitation of Jesus and of Mary. I think there's a world of wisdom here. You've missed the opportunity to be quiet. Septuagesima is our time to prepare for Lent. We think, I hope, of giving up many things, and we should. The Matins hymn for Lent gives a long list of things we could be doing less of, eating and drinking and sleeping and amusing ourselves. But the very first thing the church recommends that we ought to give up have you ever thought of it? Verbis, speech, talking, words. Today's gospel highlights a kind of speech which is common to all of us and which we could certainly do without. I refer to the sin of murmuring. Now, murmuring is not exactly complaining. Murmuring is more grumbling, backbiting, complaining behind someone's back, uh, mumbling to yourself or to others, stirring up a little resentment and letting off some steam. You might eventually do what you're told by your boss or your teacher or father, whoever it is, your parents, but you don't like it and you want to let them know, somebody else know, you're murmuring. You are murmuring. Murmuring is a terrible sin. St. Benedict in his holy rule, and he was the man really who laid the foundations for Christian Europe. St. Benedict says, quoting scripture, that we must avoid murmuring. And he sums up the rule at the end by saying, but above all, let the monks avoid murmuring. Why is it so bad? The, the malice of it, I think, is that it destroys our respect for authority and it hinders our compliance with God's providence. Scripture says, It is good for me that thou hast humbled me. The saints say that, but we don't really believe it, you or I. We believe it is the supreme evil that we should bend our will and obey, that I should submit myself to another person, that a wife should listen to her husband, that children should listen to their parents, that lay Catholics should do what Father says? God forbid. Why, that sounds an awful like the fourth commandment. That's a great sin today. And even our traditional Catholics, how can we not, buy a bit into this way of thinking. But God says, I'm going to send you some humility because I love you and I want you to be like my dear son and his blessed mother and all of my saints and I'd love to share my home with you forever in heaven. 
murmuring fosters pride as well as making us to reject God's providential gift to us. And it stirs up discord. It stirs the pot. Keeps things agitated. It steals your own peace of heart. And it steals from you the possibility of merit. It takes away peace from families, churches, workplaces, and society. Remember, Almighty God does act through others and deliberately. That doesn't mean that they are infallibly correct, but it does mean that it is God's will. And sometimes we ought to just not second guess the good God or grumble against Him. There's a world of wisdom here. Do you remember the old way of raising children? Um, you know how sometimes, this is not the only, but I mean even today, parents will often say, the only time I really let somebody have it is amongst the kids, then I realize later on, I got the wrong one. <laughs> he didn't even do it. But then what was the classic old time response? Well, that's for the time when you did it and you didn't get it. So just don't complain. There's wisdom there. There's humility. Accept it. Go along with it. Do you remember the old way that we were taught as children in a Catholic school to accept correction or a punishment? You put your hand out. Whack! With the ruler from sister. Thank you, sister. Not, sister, I wasn't so bad. He was allowed. Thank you, sister. And that was it. You were taught to keep your mouth shut. That was a great lesson for life and for the afterlife and to get into heaven. There's a great wisdom there. There's great virtue. See that? There's great virtue there. We don't always have to put our two cents in. We don't always have to justify ourselves. Even if we were in the right. Father may have been entirely wrong. Mom may have entirely the wrong picture. So what? Do you think that God is not capable of drawing good out of what you view at this moment as this dramatic evil? What about? What about? What about? What about? What difference does it finally make except that you should not reject God's grace? In much, in much talking, St. Benedict again quoting sacred scripture, in much talking thou canst not avoid sin. Consider how good it is sometimes to keep quiet. This past Tuesday, we kept, we, the church observed in the martyrology uh, the feast days of one of the great Egyptian solitaries, uh, monks and abbots. His name is St. Macarius the Great. He didn't want to have followers. Uh, this is 4th century Egypt, fifth, early 5th. He didn't want to have followers, but eventually they came and he, out of charity had to receive them. And eventually there were some difficulties or problems and a very serious sin was committed. And according to the rule, he was obliged to excommunicate. St. Macarius was one of the monks. That's, that's what was done. Well, they had the assembly of the monks and St. Macarius pronounced the excommunication. And um, much to everyone's surprise, the excommunicated monk wasn't having any of that, thank you very much. And he stood up and he accused the abbot of doing exactly the same thing that he had been found guilty of. And he excommunicated St. Macarius. The saint said nothing. He bowed his head and he accepted his being cut off from the community, and that meant too, you weren't allowed to go to Mass. He accepted it silently. We were shocked. And the guilty man, who was just kind of angling for a good fight, you know how it is, was so taken aback with the silence of the saint that he fessed up and begged for forgiveness. And all was well. Because of silence. This kind of silence is a virile, a manly virtue. But it is necessary not only for men, but also for women. Silence in a husband, I think, is often the near despair of his wife. 
because women tend to be a little bit more talkative, and men often do practice just as kind of a virtue. But when a woman practices it, it is a great thing. Saint Macarius again, generally ate once a week. They say he was a skeleton of a man, gaunt, oh, pale, despite having lived under the Egyptian broiling sun. He never ate or drank or slept to satisfaction as much as he needed his whole life long. One time it was shown to him that there were only two souls holier than he in all of Egypt. And our Lord told him who they were. They were two housewives who kept silent, who were patient with their husbands and never said a word, never a contrary word came out of their lips. And they were holier than that holy old hermit with all of his fasting and all of his prayers. We need this virtue sometimes if you'll just not miss your chance to be quiet. An awful lot of good will come and an awful lot of evil may be avoided. But how do you know? Well, each situation is different. And I couldn't get into it all now, not by any means. There are certainly times when you are obliged to talk, for example, correction, uh, the charity of giving a little instruction. But there are other times when it would be better just to keep quiet. Can I give you this as a quick little rule of thumb? Look, if you are dying to say something, don't. Let it go. Just be quiet. Don't say a word. If you have this little gnawing voice in the back of your head saying, I should really have a little talk with him now, but you'd be a little embarrassed and you wouldn't know quite how to say it and you'd feel a little uncomfortable, do it. That's your obligation. Adjure contra is a great rule of the spiritual life. Act against nature, our fallen nature. Right away rears up to, re to claim our rights. Don't you dare speak to me, Lama. But then, when we really need to say something, often we fall into an uncomfortable silence. Lent, like life, ought to be the imitation of Jesus and of Mary. We will be offering the Stations of the Cross many times this Lent, and I hope that all of you will have the occasion to make them together in the church, here, especially Fridays, but also on a private basis, yourself, as a devotion, this Lent, make the stations. But what good would it possibly do you to make the stations if you're making the stations when you're finished with church? That is to say, going from person to person, situation to situation, accusing others, justifying yourself, keeping the pot stirred, and all of the rest. Don't. Sip it up. Let it go. Be quiet. In the stations, we are meant to be imitating our Lord. There are 14 stations, and in only three of them does he speak. And in the first, we read in the Gospel, Jesus autem taceba. But Christ was being quiet. The eighth station, he says a line or two out of charity to the women of Jerusalem. And at the twelfth, our Savior dying says but seven words. His seven last words. And for the rest of it, he, who is wisdom itself, was silent. He was silent. Couldn't you find in your time, in your life, sometimes just to be quiet? Among, among all of your Lenten resolutions, do as the church does in her Matins hymn for Lent. Put that first. You will get your chance to be quiet this land. Just don't miss it. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.